Welcome to Tales of a Goth Girl. This is a new podcast that I am launching now, but this is just your warning that we're going to be talking about some sexual violence. This is just a warning that we will be talking about some disturbing things, so viewer discretion is advised. I'm so excited to finally share this podcast with you. I talked about launching this podcast in summer of 2022, if you're following me on Instagram, and I was finally able to bring Tales from a Goth Girl to fruition. So enjoy the ride, and this is episode one. Welcome to my new podcast, Tales from a Goth Girl. Today, we'll be not only doing my makeup while I share my incredible experience where I got to film a Jean Benet Ramsey documentary on Tubi. You can also find that link below, so please support me and watch it on Tubi. It is free. This is my new podcast, and I can't wait to share this adventure with you guys as well. Normally on Creeps and Cosmetics, I talk about paranormal and spooky stuff, but today is an exception because I can't wait to share the documentary I got to film, and it did premiere in December of 2022. So here we go on this new adventure. Stay tuned for the podcast. Let me give an official welcome to my new podcast, Tales from a Goth Girl. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're asking yourself, what is this podcast going to entail? If you know me from Ghost Girl Diaries, you know that I've done paranormal content for literally years on YouTube. And I also have a very successful paranormal podcast called Ghost Girl Diaries. Essentially, this is going to be my hub where I can talk about everything other than paranormal. I always felt so restricted with paranormal. Like I love paranormal. It's my life. I myself am strange and unusual. Real life is sometimes you want to talk about your relationships. Sometimes you want to talk about coworkers. Sometimes you want to talk about family and real life issues. And this is going to be my place for that. But today I'm even more excited. I'm doing my first official Creeps and Cosmetics back. It's been a while. And we're going to be talking about the Tubi episode I did on the JonBenet Ramsey case. That's right. You heard it and it's official. I got to film my first true crime television series and I couldn't be more proud. All of my products from this video will be in the description below and always linked on my Amazon store. So let's get into it. Now, all of my other creeps and cosmetics are related to paranormal content haunted locations. Normally, I will stick with that type of content, but this is just too special for me not to bring awareness to the table. I'm wanting to talk about this not only for my experience growing up in Denver, Colorado, but also because Jean Benet Ramsey's father is sort of on a mission to try and find her killer before he dies because he is older now. So my goal for this podcast is not only for me to help convince you to help him on this journey, but I would also love it if you would be willing to sign his petition so that we can get the release of the DNA from the Jean Benet case so that we can find her killer. And of course, I will link that below. I did grow up in a suburb of Denver, and I grew up in a suburb called Lakewood, Colorado. It's only about 30 to 40 minutes from Boulder, which is where the actual case of Jean Benet took place. Growing up in Denver, Colorado, it was extremely safe. You're talking about the 90s when I was there as a child, and really nobody had any reason to suspect that there was a killer on the loose. I definitely grew up in an era where you would take your bike, you know, to the store by yourself. You would, um, you know, go to the park by yourself with your friends and nobody ever really worried about where you were. None of us had cell phones and it just didn't matter at that time. I definitely grew up in middle America the suburbs of America, and it was definitely safe. There was never a reason for anyone to suspect it wasn't safe for your children. Now let's talk about the actual case itself and what happened when Jean Benet was murdered. It was December 26th of 1996. The day after Christmas, John and Patsy Ramsey, her parents have woken up the day after Christmas and they cannot find their daughter Jean Benet Ramsey. And yes, she was known as a local beauty queen. In fact, I became a cosmetologist and part of me really thinks that it was inspired by Jean Benet because I was just enthralled 
with the beauty world, right? So I made sure I got my cosmetology license because I was just fascinated with her always being on the news, being on all of the articles of the newspaper. She was like our star of Colorado. And as a child growing up in that time, it was really important to have some sort of an idol that was a local hero. John and Patsy Ramsey awake. They can't find their daughter anywhere. They search their entire house before they finally call the police and say, there's a missing person, we need help, our child has gone missing. Now take in mind, you're discussing something that is people who are really in an elite area of Boulder, Colorado. Once again, not far from my house, but you have to be a millionaire to be in this area. The people that live in Boulder who are not millionaires are really just people that are going to school for college. Now, as Patsy is on the phone with the police, she discovers on the staircase that there is a ransom note. The request in the ransom note is requesting $118,000, which is quite a specific number because John and Patsy Ramsey are very well off and the Christmas prior to that, John actually received a bonus from his job that was near the same amount of $118,000. So it was a quite specific amount of money. Leading investigators to wonder if whoever did this actually knew the family. It had to have possibly been someone who knew the family well enough that they knew that John had gotten this bonus and they came to take the child in exchange for money. Now, of course, the house has been scoured and searched, right, to what they believe to be from top to bottom because we're talking about a massive size mansion home. Now, remember, this ransom note has been written. It's a very long, lengthy ransom note that's a lot of gibberish and doesn't make sense. And the police come and that is when all this strangeness sort of breaks out. Now the note does warn Patsy not to involve the police, but of course the very first thing she does is call the police. Thank goodness that she did do that. Now it's interesting because due to the reports, the police arrive at around 5.55 a.m. in the morning when all of this was unfolding. Essentially the Ramses had woken up early because they were planning a trip to like get away and they were going to be packing and leaving, but couldn't find Jean Benet. Now, when the police arrived, they did immediately block off Jean Benet's room in case of evidence, but her bedroom was the only room that was actually blocked off by police, which essentially gave full freedom to the rest of the house. And by this time, the Ramses were fully convinced that someone had taken their daughter, so they were calling in the troops. Family friends, their minister pastor came. Everyone was there to basically show support to John and Patsy while the search went on looking for Jean Benet. Mistakes were made immediately with the case when the police officers arrived, which is interesting yet again because the police were also there. They did do a thorough search throughout the entire property, but even the police missed the basement. How is that possible? I understand it's a large home, but for as much scrutiny as the Ramses were put under for not looking in the basement, the police also did not do a thorough search on the home. Now, in the meantime, family and friends are arriving, churchgoers, and now everyone is just stomping and trampling through the house through possible evidence. The police are there, yet they don't stop these people from coming in. The Ramses were held responsible, but isn't this supposed to be a PD responsibility, a police department's responsibility to clear and make sure that the crime scene is untouched or potential crime scene. So it's amazing to me through the media frenzy of this that the police were not held more responsible and the family was more persecuted. Now, when you have people in and out of a house like that, there is a huge possibility a lot of evidence is going to be destroyed. Now, in the ransom note, it did say that the abductor would be calling at a certain time. However, that never happened. The person who claimed to have taken Jean Benet in the ransom note never made the phone call to their home. So they sat around waiting, and that was why the police initially 
pushed back the formal interviews with the parents. Now by 1 p.m., the family finally is instructed again by the police to essentially circle the home one more time to make sure they haven't seen anything unturned, if anything's out of place, or even if they happen to forget to search a closet or something like that. So you can imagine by 1 p.m. from 5.55 when the note was found, how many people have come in and out of this location a lot. So Mr. Ramsey and a friend end up going through the house one last time to make sure they've searched everywhere and that is when John Ramsey goes into the basement. In the basement is where they find Jean Benet's lifeless body. Now you have to put yourself in his shoes. A father who's been worried sick about his daughter goes into the basement to find his daughter's lifeless body. What would the first thing intuitively tell you to do? Of course, he picked up his daughter to see if she was still alive. I can't say I wouldn't have done the same thing, especially what was she five or six years old. Of course, you're not going to think the worst. You're in a state of shock and the, you wanna think the best and hope maybe she needs CPR, maybe she needs oxygen, what happened. He probably wasn't thinking worst case scenario, someone did something unimaginable and took her to the basement. I don't think that's where his thought process was. But of course, John was scrutinized for picking up his daughter's lifeless body, saying that he also could have disturbed evidence. But once again, when the police were searching the house, why didn't they go into the basement where they could have found her first? It's just unimaginable to me how messed up this case was from the police department. So John brought her body upstairs where he tried resuscitating her with CPR and they stayed there for about 10 minutes trying to resuscitate her, but she had already been long gone. And once again, now you're on display. You have all of the family there watching. Your wife is in hysteria. It's just chaos, utter chaos. Everyone's watching as they find this little girl's lifeless body. Even after all that, John was still scrutinized for picking up his daughter's body. And he was more scrutinized in the public eye for picking up his daughter's body than the police were scrutinized for completely missing the basement. Now later an autopsy was done on Jean Benet. Later on through the autopsy, it was determined that her mouth had been taped shut with duct tape and she did die from asphyxiation due to strangulation, which is just terrible for her parents to have to know that, which has to be such a terrifying, scary way for a little girl to go. In addition, there was a skull fracture. So yes, her mouth was covered with duct tape, but her neck and wrists were covered and wrapped with this sort of white rope. Now, no body fluid was found on Jean Benet, but it did appear that it had been wiped clean on the areas where a child would be potentially harmed, but it was determined a sexual assault had taken place. Now, part of this rope was also made into a garrette. If you're not familiar with what that is, you have to be fairly versed into using one of these items and especially making one from home. And essentially they used a paintbrush that they found in the basement when Jean Benet was down there. So whoever had done this had to be somewhat advanced with their skills. And in order to use a garrette, you have to be fairly strong as well, which is why I think Burke was initially ruled out. Although semen was not found on Jean Benet, there was a stain that was found on her pajamas. That was what they used for DNA and that was how they proved Burke and her father and anyone else in the family was not involved. That DNA is essentially to this day being held hostage by Boulder Police Department. And that is what John is fighting with the petition I told you guys about to attempt to get this DNA released to a third party so it can be tested so potentially we can find out who her killer is. So the garret was used for the strangulation part. The coroner also found what he believed to be fresh pineapple in Jean Benet's stomach, which is something I bring up in the docu-series. So please make sure you find the link below and watch me on Tubi. The parents said that they did not remember giving Jean Benet pineapple the night before. So it was suspected that whoever did this essentially knew Jean Benet and essentially knew that she loved pineapple 
trusted her enough to bring her to the kitchen first, which is where they also found the pineapple bowl on the counter, fed her the pineapple to get her trust, and then lured her into the basement. I do believe that whoever did this was familiar with not only Jean Benet, but with the family, knew them personally, and possibly had interacted with them before. I'll give my theory on who the killer is at the end of this podcast. Now, of course, when they found the bowl of pineapple on the counter, when the police were there, they did have it inspected for fingerprints. And of course, they found her brother Burke's fingerprints on it. However, remember, they all live in this home. Their fingerprints are going to be everywhere. So due to that, Burke was brought in for questioning and wasn't officially ruled out until his DNA was not a positive match for the stain that was left on Jean Benet's pajamas. All three main members of the family were requested to hand over handwriting samples to ensure that they were not behind the initial investigation of the ransom note that was left on the staircase. Burke and John were immediately ruled out. However, Patsy was considered inconclusive. And of course, then that made everyone look at Patsy. The question was, was she somehow involved with the death of her daughter, Jean Benet? Now there was many other subjects that the police could have focused on for this investigation. However, they made the decision to zero in on the three main family members, which were the mother, the father, and the brother Burke. And that was where the center focus of this investigation went for years and years to come. I also believe that was a huge mistake on the police's department because if, if suspects don't believe that you're on their tail, they will just get further and further away from the evidence, from the location, and Really, that's what Boulder Police did, was they gave this killer time. Now, in 1999, the Boulder Police Department had thought they had gathered enough information to ensure that a grand jury would be able to indict them on child abuse charges. When they were formally indicted, it was child endangerment and obstruction on a murder investigation. However, the prosecutor thought that there was not enough evidence to support this, and the case was thrown out. Jean Benet's parents were never officially named suspects in her murder. Now, there was a lot of physical evidence supporting an intruder theory. However, I think by that point, the police had messed up so bad and had gone years and years on trying to blame the Ramses that it was almost just too late to look at anyone else. There were even other private investigators that were brought in to look at the case who also looked down and shunned the Boulder Police Department for the way they butchered the case. There was a boot print that was found next to Jean Benet's body that did not match anyone else in the household that was really never brought into the media's light. There was a broken window in the basement, which these investigators believe it definitely led to whoever came in and lured her into the basement. That was the point of entry and exit for whoever this person was. And there was DNA drops of blood that were found on Jean Benet's underwear. And they believe this DNA matches whoever this person was. It was concluded that it was male DNA. Burke was tested as a match. He did not match and neither did John Ramsey. And apparently the rest of the home was heavily carpeted. So whenever this intruder came in, you probably weren't going to easily hear him because there wasn't wooden floors or squeaky tiles when you hear someone walking through your home. Also take in mind how large this house was. Now, the most famous subject that they were looking at was a man named John Carr, spelled K-A-R-R -R if you're interested in Googling it. He was actually arrested in 2006. He claimed to have confessed to the killing of Jean Benet, and he said he actually drugged and assaulted her. But investigators knew that he was lying because no drugs were found in her toxicology. Police also could not confirm that he was in Boulder at the time of her death, and so eventually he was released and discounted as an actual suspect. Also, they did test his DNA, and his DNA was not a match for the samples that were found on Jean Benet's body. So there was blood found on Jean Benet's underwear, and she was wearing long johns at the time, which is where they found an enlarged semen stain. It was entered into the national database in 2003, but there still has not been any hits. In 2006, a new district attorney took on the case. Can you imagine? This has been going on for almost a decade at this point. The new DA is Mary Lacey, and she actually took over the case. She also believed that the intruder theory was the best possible answer. 
Under Lacey's lead with the investigation, she decided to allow prosecutors to test the DNA and skin cells that were found under Jean Benet's fingernails. And after that DNA was tested, this statement was released, and I want to read it word for word for you. The Boulder District Attorney's Office does not consider any member of the Ramsey family, including John, Patsy, or Burke Ramsey, as suspects in the case. We make this announcement now because we have recently obtained this new scientific evidence that adds significantly to the value of the scientific evidence provided. So it wasn't until 2008 that they were finally released as not suspects in their own child's death. And by this time, who knows who was behind the murder? John even talked about how he was just so badgered and chewed up and spit out by the media. Everyone was in the tabloids making fun of them for, you know, harming and hurting their child. And it was all because it was a propaganda scheme from the police. They were really just too lazy to do their job. And they turned to the Ramses to be at fault. And I can't imagine being a parent years and years go by and you still are left without answers. In 2010, the case was fully reopened. Experts with the DNA even believe there's a possibility of two suspects rather than just one. In 2016, it was announced that the DNA would actually be sent to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to attempt to find a DNA match. Also in 2016, CBS aired a documentary that said that Burke was the killer. It was essentially said that this nine-year-old child created a, a garret and murdered his sister. Burke filed a $750 million lawsuit for defamination against CBS and won. For some reason, everyone continues to forget that there were two samples of DNA found, the blood and the semen stain. And I blame that on the media because it's just been a media frenzy since, and they've always just wanted someone to blame rather than blaming the right person. The case was settled with Burke in 2019. You know that it was a large amount of money, but it was but the case was closed outside of court. And to this day, the Jean Benet Ramsey case still remains an open active case. There is now DNA skin cells that have been gathered from underneath Jean Benet's fingernails, the blood, and also the semen stain. It did not match parents or any acquaintances of the family. Everyone was tested. So the question is, who did it? Despite the lack of proof against the parents, it was basically blamed on them for years and years to come. The police could only point the finger at the parents. The parents murdered a child of a beauty queen. I mean, of course that story will sell, right? Parents murdering the beauty queen child. Now, the one investigator that isn't mentioned often and who should be sort of hailed a hero in this is a man named Lou Smith. You can look him up, L-O-U, Smith, S-M-I-T. However, he did pass away in 2010, but he made it his lifelong journey and purpose to find the murderer of Jean Benet. And even though Lou died in 2010, his children have gone on to live his legacy and are still working on the case today. John Ramsey continues to say that we have, quote, pushed and pushed the Boulder police continuously and still have had no success. This was the statement that he released to the media, and I want to read it to you guys because it was incredibly moving when I got to work with them on set for this documentary. I am 78 years old right now, and I realize that the time for answers is running out. The murder of my daughter can never be undone. There will never be peace or closure, but there can be and should be justice. John has made it his lifelong mission to find out who murdered his daughter. John Ramsey has now threatened to sue the Boulder Police Department and even the Colorado Bureau for Investigation because they have let this case go to the sideline. And he has even hired third party investigators himself, including DNA analysis to take the DNA and try to find a match. However, the Boulder Police Department does not want to release the DNA to the third party, yet they also don't want to do any more work on it either. So that's where John comes in trying to bring more publicity to this so that no one forgets his daughter. And he hopes this isn't just a movement about her, but it's so that police continue to do their job correctly for years to come. And anyone that's experienced a murder of a family member, just like I have with my own mother, can hopefully find closure in doing at least one case right. And that is where his petition comes in. This petition, if signed and you support him, will allow an independent agency to get 
the DNA samples from the Boulder Police Department so that he can finally seek justice at 78 years old. He actually went to the Crime Con Convention in 2002 to make a statement and bring awareness back to the case, which I commend him so much for just never giving up. I will link the petition below and I would love for you to sign it to give support to John Ramsey. Now I know what you're gonna ask. You're gonna say, so Crystal, what do you think happened? What do you think happened to Jean Benet? Now it's interesting, I have a different perspective because I did grow up in Colorado and I did beg my mother to be in pageants just like Jean Benet. My mother was also a Midwest pageant queen just like her mother Patsy. And so I think my mother found inspiration in that. My mother did take me to some pageants to see what it was like. My mom had been out of the pageant scene for so long. She didn't know what she was getting into. So she wanted me to experience it. And then if we enjoyed it, we would have that as a hobby together. However, once my mother took me to these pageants as a child, she said something was wrong, something was off. And she truly believed there was some sort of strange pedophilia child ring going on behind the scenes. These people that win these pageants, it's not only about getting a prize and a trophy, it's about money, it's about scholarships, it's about free cars, free trips, it's so much more than that. And it ends up becoming an interlocked inner web. And my mother told me, absolutely not, you will not be in a pageant. So I was not allowed to be in the pageants. I was absolutely heartbroken by that. I do not think that John Ramsey knew what was going on. He was a self-made millionaire, say he was, you know, an aristocrat of his time. I think that he was very focused on his work and building his empire where Patsy had put all of her energy into raising the kids and specifically, you know, these pageants, much like herself growing up with Jean Benet. I think that if Jean Benet didn't win, her reputation was on the line. And I think that she would exchange the winnings for, you know, at the sake of her daughter having to do certain things with men in this pedophilia ring. Once again, if you go back to the pineapple and remember that it takes at least 45 minutes for pineapple to be absorbed from your stomach and digested, it was still in full pieces within her stomach. So the question is, whoever gave her that, it was still in her stomach as they killed her. So she was trusting whoever gave her that pineapple that night. Therefore, I think whoever was involved had already known her. They already knew that she liked pineapple. They possibly had already assaulted her before. Do I think that Jean Benet was supposed to die? No, I think that it may have been a trick that was supposed to be sent, you know, in exchange for something else. I think Patsy knew was in on it. And whoever was there, you know, doing what they needed to get done or became obsessed with Jean Benet went too far and killed Jean Benet. Also, why would a child willingly walk down into a scary dark basement with someone, whether they knew them or not? I mean, as a resident there, it shook up Colorado. It changed our lives. We weren't allowed to go out and play alone anymore. Like just everything changed because we thought a killer was on the loose. There's even other more interesting information with this evidence, like whoever this was that wrote the letter, they actually wrote a first initial letter, didn't like how it came out and scribbled it out and threw it in the trash can in the Ramsey's living room. So whoever was there was comfortable with being there for a long time. The actual letter was really long, which is not normal to be left after a murder. This person was comfortable there. This person knew the family and Jean Benet trusted this person. Some may even say that Patsy getting cancer may have been her karma for what she'd put her daughter through. But now that Patsy's gone, we'll never know the truth. I hope that Bert can find peace. I can't imagine your sister being murdered and you catch the blame all these years later. He also didn't deserve that. I hope that John Ramsey finds peace. He is 78 years old and I pray for his sake that someday, soon, he will be able to find who murdered his daughter and he will be able to seek the justice that him and Jean Benet deserve. What's your opinion on the case? Do you think it was also butchered because of the way the police did it? I hope that you continue to support John Ramsey on him trying to seek the truth and justice for his daughter. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Creeps and Cosmetics and make sure you download it as a podcast. You can find it on all platforms under Tales 
from a goth girl. Make sure you guys like my video, leave me comments below to show support, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, follow me on TikTok, and we will catch you guys next time.